I'm in John chapter 3, verse 1. There was a Pharisee, a religious man, and he was part of a body of people that ruled Israel. Now, Nicodemus was known for his righteousness. He was a good man. Nicodemus kept the law of God. He was very sincere, and he did a very good job of it. Everybody that knew him respected him. People probably said about Nicodemus, if anybody's going to heaven, he is. Because he tithed, he was always in the synagogue, he always offered the sacrifices. He was a man that was very faithful to everything God said. He did it just right. But Nicodemus was troubled by something. There was a man that was not one of their own, not a Pharisee, not a religious leader, not a priest, who's a carpenter. And that carpenter came to town, and he began to speak about love and judgment in a way that Nicodemus had never heard. In fact, when he spoke, it seemed that he thought that the religious leaders were just as sinful as the publicans. In fact, he seemed to be harder on the religious people than he was the outright sinners. He told them that they must repent if they were going to enter into the kingdom of heaven. But what really troubled Nicodemus was that this man performed miracles. One day, Jesus was walking along, and everyone stopped because it was a funeral procession. You could hear the weeping and the wailing because a little girl about 11 years old had died. Prematurely, suddenly, she died. Maybe she had an ear infection or something like that, and it just it got the best of her. Her parents were weeping, and as the procession came by, there was that little corpse lying there, being taken to the grave where it would be buried. And Jesus stepped out into the way where these people were walking, and they had to step around him. And then when they finally came to where the corpse was lying, Jesus stood right in the way, and they stopped. He took her hand, and he spoke, and she jumped up. She jumped up. And she looked for her mama, and her mama began to cry, and her daddy began to rejoice, and the people went out of their minds. Some people probably said, well, maybe she wasn't dead. Maybe she was just sleeping or something. Other people said, well, maybe it's the devil did it. Some people said, no, it's the power of God. That troubled Nicodemus, but then a little while later, Nicodemus saw Jesus down at the marketplace, and there was a lame man lying there. His kids would come see him about once a month, but he had been lame all since he was just a young man, all crippled up. Family would occasionally drop by, but most of the time he just lay on the side of the road and begged for people to give him a little money or a little something to eat. One day Jesus walked up to him and just looked down at him and said, rise and he got up and he walked Nicodemus saw that and it scared him because it said that what this man said about God was different from what he'd been teaching this man taught that God loved everyone equally he loved the people who broke the law and he loved the people who kept the law but this man Jesus said that everybody was breaking the law even the good people that though they didn't commit adultery, they were lusting and committing adultery in their hearts. Though they didn't murder, they were being angry, so angry that they spit out hostile words, brothers to sisters, sisters to brothers, children to parents, speaking ugly things. And Jesus said, that's murder. You're committing murder in your heart. And no murderer will have a part in the kingdom of God. So Nicodemus one day saw another event. It was a man blind, blind from birth. He'd never seen the light of day. He just stumbled around in darkness. People would take his hand and lead him. And Jesus 
spit on the ground. And then he took his finger and he stirred around in the spit and he made a little mud ball. And he took the man's eyelid and pulled it down and rubbed the mud right into his eyeball. And then he rubbed some in the other eyeball. And people were laughing. The man must have squirmed back. That would hurt even if you couldn't see. That'd feel awful, gritty sand in your eye. And then Jesus said to him, now go down to the pool of Siloam and wash. And he went down there and washed. And as he began to wash that mud out of his eye, that sand, he began to see a little light. As he washed it more, he could see more. And at some point, he could see clearly. And he came back rejoicing. That man, Jesus, made me see. Now, Nicodemus was bothered by that because that meant Jesus was somebody special. And then Nicodemus heard Jesus say one day, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. I and the Father are one. He said, you are of your father, the devil, but I am of God. Now, there was rumors that Jesus was the son of Mary, married to a carpenter, and that Mary was conceived with Jesus before she was married and before Joseph knew her sexually. That is that Mary was a complete virgin, never been kissed, never been touched, never had sex, and yet she became pregnant. She said an angel came and said that the child conceived in your womb is the Savior, Emmanuel, God with us. That's what they were saying. And when someone asked Jesus, he just smiled and nodded. But someone from the back said his mother was not improper woman. He's a bastard. But he said nothing. He walked on. So Nicodemus was troubled. And the religious leaders that he was a part of were whispering that they were going to have to put Jesus to death. That he was upsetting all the churches, all the religious people, that they, did, they couldn't have him teaching these things anymore. And any time Jesus showed up in public, they mocked him. They made fun of him. They took his words and turned them into saying something different from what he actually said. So Nicodemus wanted to talk to Jesus, but he was afraid to talk to him with all of his friends looking on because they would have just mocked and ridiculed, and he wouldn't have been able to have a good conversation. So Nicodemus made up his mind that he would go and talk to Jesus at night when everyone had gone home and just Jesus and the disciples were gathered around a little campfire there, eating a little bread that someone gave them, maybe some fish caught out of the Sea of Galilee, that he'd go and he'd talk to him then. So the Bible says there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, here's what Nicodemus said, Rabbi, now that's, He's more than a rabbi. In fact, he wasn't a rabbi at all. Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. Now, what does he say? We know thou art a teacher come from God. He is speaking on behalf of all the other Pharisees. That is, Nicodemus perceived that they all actually knew he was of God. We know you're a teacher come from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. So Nicodemus confessed that he believed these miracles and that these miracles indicated that Jesus was of God in some unique way. Now, at this point, Nicodemus believes in miracles. He believes in Jesus to the degree that he understands that he's a teacher come from God. And he's a good man who keeps the law. So you might think that Jesus would say to him, Nicodemus, you're a really good man. 
And I appreciate the fact that you understand and you believe, but that's not what Jesus said. Here's what he said. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, that's truly, truly, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. You know, five-year-old, six-year-old, 10-year-old, 12-year-old, 15-year-old, 20-year-old, except you're born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. 84-year-old, except you're born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. Jesus said, Nicodemus, something's going to have to happen to you if you're going to go to heaven. It's not enough that you're good. It's not enough that you go to church. It's not enough that you believe in my miracles. Nicodemus, you must be born again. Now, no one had ever used that term before. It didn't make any sense. A friend of mine was on an elevator in a hospital. He was visiting the psych ward on the fifth floor down in Memphis. And uh, it was a place where they let the pastors in. And so this friend of mine was a pastor. And a Catholic priest got on the elevator with them and spoke to the, his assistant. And he said, speaking of some crazy guy on the psych ward, he said, you know, only thing that will help him is to be born all over again. There's no hope. Now, the Catholic priest didn't say born again. He just said the only thing that will help him is to be born all over again. He was speaking of someone so messed up on drugs, so crazy in their minds, so full of hate, cutting himself with knives, angry, bitter. And the priest said, we can't help him. He just needs to get born again. He needs a new start. He needs to be a different person. The person he is is not savable. My friend said, yes, he needs to get born again. Now, that's what Jesus said to Nicodemus, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And then he goes on to say, Nicodemus saith unto him, how can a man be born when he's old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Now, Nicodemus thought that Jesus was speaking nonsense. Nicodemus said, that's ridiculous. Is a man going to enter back into his mother's womb and be born again? In other words, he's too big, wouldn't fit. There's no place for him there. How, how's a man going to get back in the womb and come back out again? After all, that was what Jesus said. And Jesus said, verily, verily, truly, truly, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That born of the water is what a physical, natural birth is to which Nicodemus was referring. Jesus said, except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. That's the natural birth. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. That's the spiritual birth. So you got to be born of both water, physical, and spirit, different birth. So the new birth, the second birth, the born again is a spirit birth. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. Just like a man's flesh and a woman's flesh gives birth to flesh. The spirit of God and the human spirit give birth to a new creature in Christ Jesus. Marvel not, Jesus said, that I say unto you, you must be born again. All you young people here, children, you must be born again. You must be born again. Now, if I ask you the date of your birthday, when's, when's your birthday? What month is your birthday? You'd know. What day is your birthday? You'd know. I might forget mine. But the rest of you would know the date of your birthday. And some of you might know the hour. Your mother said, well, you were born at 2.05 in the morning. Kept me awake all night. And some of us say, well, you were born in the afternoon at 9, uh, in the evening at 9.15. Uh, after a long day of pushing and horrible experience, uh, that's when you were born. So you'll know the day and maybe the hour that you are born. Listen, if you're born again, what day was it? I remember what day of the week it was for me. 
I remember what hour it was. I remember what minute it was within about three minutes. It's between 7.15 and 7.18. And I can show you where I was standing and I didn't even get wet. I was born of the spirit at that point, not born of water. And I was born again and became a new creature in Christ Jesus. I was 13 years old. Now, if you've been born again, it happened at some point in time, at some place. And just like right after a physical birth, for the first time you hear the baby's voice, it usually cries. For the first time you see its eyes, it, it breathes air, and it becomes comes into a new world. So when you're born again, you will speak. You will look, you will hear, you will be in a new world, new life, new living. Marvel not, I say unto you, must be born again. Then Jesus says, the wind blow, bloweth where it listeth. That means like where it drifts, where it wants to, where it just wherever it takes an ocean. The wind bloweth where it listeth. And thou hearest the sound thereof, but cannot tell whence it cometh or whither it goeth. So is everyone that's born of the spirit. He said, just like you walk outside and you feel, you see the trees bend suddenly with a gust and you see the ones closer and then the grass bends and then you feel it in your hair and your clothes blow. And then the wind's gone and you don't know where it came from and you don't know where it's going, but you feel its effect. So is everyone that's born of the spirit. The Spirit of God comes and stirs and moves. Nicodemus answered and said unto him, How can these things be? In other words, how does it come about? What are you talking about? Jesus answered and said unto him, Art thou master of Israel, knoweth not these things? Nicodemus was full of himself, his knowledge. And he was proud of all his religion, his church. And Jesus rebukes him. He says, you mean to tell me you're a religious leader and you don't know about being born again? You don't understand what I'm telling you? Verily I say unto thee, we speak that we do know. He's talking about we because the disciples were teaching it too. And testify that we have seen and ye receive not our witness. Jesus is taking this opportunity to get back at this Pharisee, part of that crowd that had been rejecting him. He's wanting to humble him a little bit. He said, you come here by night wanting to talk to me. He said, I'm telling you what I've seen. I'm telling you what I know, and you have not received my witness. You, as a group of people, you have rejected what I've said. If I have told you earthly things and you believe not, how shall you believe if I tell you heavenly things? And no man hath ascended up to heaven but he that came down from heaven. Now, I believe when Jesus said that, he pointed himself. He, what he's doing, he's establishing his credentials. No man, he does, waves his arm. No man has ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven. Even the son of man, which is in heaven. Now, that was hard to understand. Jesus is messing with his mind now with this religious leader, he said, look, I am the son of man. Now that that's a low, or we're all sons of men. That's not a high calling. He said, no, no man has ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the son of man, that's me, which is in heaven right now. So Jesus is declaring that he's present in two places. He's present in heaven and he's present on earth right now in front of Nicodemus. So he says, I'm telling you what I know about. I'm telling you what is the truth. And Moses, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the son of man be lifted up. Now, Nicodemus knows that story. He remembers the story. I think it's in Numbers 21, where the children of Israel have sinned against God and God has sent poison snakes to bite them. Many of them have died. Others are sick and close to death. 
And so they pray to Moses, please pray to God for us. Moses goes to God. God says, make a serpent out of brass, put it on a pole and hold it up in front of all the people so they can look. Send runners out and tell them if they look, they'll live. And whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. So he said, just like Moses lift up the serpent, I, the son of man, I'm going to be lifted up and whosoever believes in me will not perish, but have everlasting life. Jesus said, like the serpent, just the sight of it, saved those people from snake poison. Just the sight of me being lifted up, believing on me is going to save people from the poison of sin. That's how you get born again, Nicodemus. You get born again by looking at me, the son of man, when I am lifted up to pay for the sins of the world. Then he goes on to say, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So what he's saying is that God, Nicodemus, God loves the world, all the people in it, so much so that he gave his son that whosoever believes, just believes on him, will have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation, Nicodemus. This is what condemns. That light is come into the world, points to himself. And men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light. Now he's speaking directly to Nicodemus and his cohorts who have despised the light that Jesus has sent. Everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light. I think at that point he might have reached out and put his hand on Nicodemus' shoulder. He that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be manifest, that they're wrought in God. So Jesus is acknowledging that Nicodemus has come to the light. Now, you know, the story ends there. It doesn't tell what Nicodemus did. The next time you hear Nicodemus, he shows up after the crucifixion. He shows up after the crucifixion assisting in the burial of the Lord Jesus Christ. So Nicodemus didn't disappear, and we don't know if he became a secret believer. He didn't become a public one. But I do believe since we know his name and the John who wrote this knew his name, and Nicodemus did get born again later. Whenever Jesus was raised from the dead, I believe he believed. Nicodemus was born again. He came to the light. His deeds were reproved, and he became a child of God. So I ask you, have you been born again? Children, kids, have you been born again? When and where? Tell me about your believing on the Lord Jesus Christ and him taking away your sin and making you a new person in Christ Jesus. Did that happen to you? If it didn't, you need to trust in Jesus. Believe upon him, call upon him. And like Nicodemus, you'll be born of the Spirit. The Spirit of God will come into you and make you a new person. Now, I want to warn you of something. Most Christians are not born again. 99 out of 100 people who say, I'm a Christian, are not born again. They're no more Christian than the devil is. They may be good people like Nicodemus was, but they're not born again. Very few people are really born again. So, don't miss out. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. All right, I'll stop there.